revelation that this is your ability and not mine. And this anointing it shall be used to destroy yokes with burdens, but the glory shall be given to you untouched in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you, Father God, and the Spirit of God rest upon me for, Lord God, you anointed me to preach this gospel to the poor. You sent me to heal the brokenhearted and bring forth liberty to those who are held bound and captive and recover sight to the blind and to preach the supper year of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. He is good, isn't he? Yes, he is. He is so good. Thank you, Lord. I know it's going to be good today. I can tell when the enemy, when he stick his head up. Yeah, I know that. I know that. And, and then my computer wants to act up. Amen. But thank God I've been downloaded already. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He is so good. Amen. Y'all just give me one minute here. I want to make sure you got everything that God has for me to give to the ministry this morning. It's been an exciting day. And um, we're just getting back from Cumberland. And we had a blessed service there. Amen. Cumberland is on fire there. Amen. And we just thank God for that. And, you know, last time, um, Brother Marvin, Minister Marvin and... Um, Minister Janice, they drove me last time, and um, we stopped by Starbucks, and we had some coffee. They said, mm, this is good, and as we're heading back, Minister Janice said, oh, they got another Starbucks. Possibly pull on get another hit. I said, another hit? I said, what? What the world? What the? This ain't what I, this is not the way I was trying to minister to you. I just, you know, what we call a hit, you know, we, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> She said, come on and get another hit. I said, Lord, I said, what have I done? Hey, man, hey, man, what have I done, Lord? Do me a favor. Somebody can go in my office and um, get my iPhone for me. Somebody, you, you got a key. You get my iPhone for me. I got to put in another code. Amen. So why this thing is doing whatever it's doing, stretch your hands towards this laptop. Say, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> say, get yourself together. Hey, man. Hey, mounted face recognition, passcodes, and everything. What, what the world? What the world? Like my granddaughter said. Well, anyhow, let me let me give you um, some some updates. And the reason why I talk about some of the things I mentioned before offering is because you know I want to see every department becoming better in what they do. Amen. Because we have a, a awesome job ahead of us, and we just thank God for the, for the privilege. Amen. And then also, um, we was out at um, Hopewell for the asked me to come out and speak for Black History Month. And um, now I'm going out there once a month now, scheduled for the end of this month to go back. We'll be training uh, the teens, and then we'll probably be coming in to train the staff. Amen. So a lot of great things and different things is taking place in the ministry. And um, ain't no telling. We're looking at some things right now as far as I don't know. But I'm just going to say it was in my spirit. Look like we're going to be doing another church. Well, not a church, but a, well, it's a church um, starting probably in, in, uh, probably in April. It's going to be called the, um, see, they were saying that all hope, there was no hope in the well. That's what they were saying about it. And so what we named this is Well of Hope Empowerment Center. Amen. Well of Hope Empowerment Center. And. We're working on some things now. I didn't know we already had favor with these certain people that was there. And so a lot of great things are taking place. And then also, um, I've got the privilege that on March the 26th, thank you, Lord, I will be the motivational speaker for Starbucks March the 26th. Amen. For the southern region, amen. So like 14 stores are coming together. Hiya. But I tell you, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to work out some more details. See, I, keep, I kept talking about Starbucks, and the one day that harvest is going to come, amen. And so we're putting some things together, and um, got to meet with the uh, district manager again. We'll put some things together. And I learned some. This is what I learned. Jesus taught in the temples. But when he dealt with the multitude, he talked to them in parables. And then when the disciples said, what's the meaning of this parable? He said, for you, you know, the mystery of the kingdom, God's not hidden from you. So we got to learn how to minister in diverse matters because other people come here, they may not even understand, what is he talking about? 
So now we got to go out there, we empower people, we build them up. And I learned, I asked God about Jesus' ministry. He said, we have been taking the messages, scriptures, and correlating them for, to bring forth the message that he'll have us to do. And he said, that's correct. He said, but we've been missing the blueprint. And the blueprint is this, that God so loved the world, he didn't so love the earth, he loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. See, a person coming here, you'll condemn them. And God said, I, I, I sent my son for him. We condemn, we condemn the athletes. We condemn the movie stars. We condemn those in, in marketplaces, the millionaires, the billionaires. And God said, I so love the world. He said, I sent you to the world. Amen. So we stay away from the world. We just stay in our, in our church corners and everything and let the world. But you understand that what the world is doing is making decisions for you. Amen. So we're going into the marketplace, we're going to the athletic place, we know we're already in the banking place, and we're going to a higher level. So we got to get rid of our own self-righteousness and, 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 who say, and saying who God likes and who he don't like. The Bible says he so loved the world, the world system. He, he loved the system, the people that's in the system, that he gave his only begotten son. He don't love the system, he loved the people that's in the system. He said, I'll give you my kingdom so you can save them. From that system. Amen. And so I asked God, I said, show me Jesus. Show me how he did. And Jesus went from house to house. He went in the streets. He went in the temple. And he went in the marketplace. And he went into the political realm. Amen. So I can't rewrite the gospel. The blueprint is there. And I'm going to do everything that I could possibly do that God tell me to do. I'm going to do it. Amen. And you can join me if you want to. But if you're all self-righteous, I'm going, it's going to be a disturbing ride. Amen. <laughs> so let's win people. Amen. I love for Beyonce to come up in here one day and say, you know, because she said, well, Pastor Harvey, my friend, because he won't like the other pastor who turned their nose up to me and I can minister and get a baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Right. And say, will you get up on the stage preach this? <laughs> Amen. Talking about drunk in love. Amen. Be drunk in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> she said, hey. <laughs> This morning, we're going to talk about the power of expectations. I preach a little bit of this in Cumberland, but we're going to take a different um, look at this today. The power of expectations. Amen. And your expectations have power. And you can be empowered by your expectations. And we're talking about power of better expectations. Because we said in Cumberland this morning, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I have great expectations. But so did Job. Job had great expectations that the thing where he feared, it came upon him. So you can have great expectations, but it can be the wrong great expectation. You got to have better expectations. How do you see what God has in store for you? How do you see it? How do you see life? How do you see your children? How do you see your families? How do you see it? Let's go here to the first Samuel chapter 17. And you already know this is my Bible. This is the word of God. I have what it says. I can do what it says. I can do it. Be who it says. I can be. And that thou heard spoken and, and done the word of God. Uh, w too late. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. First Samuel, chapter 17. Somebody say more. Oh. Praise be unto God. First Samuel, chapter 17. And we're going to look here in verse uh, 28. He says, and Elahab, Elahab, his eldest brother, Tom of David, heard when he spake unto the men, and Elab, anger was kindled against David, and said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? He tried to break them down. I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that you might see the battle. And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? He turned from him towards another, toward another, and spake after the same manner, and the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him, that servant will go and fight with the Philistine. Now, you got a whole army over here that has ran up on the hill, and, and the enemy, Goliath, have crossed the enemy line as blowing blunts, 
Not blunts. What you call it? <laughs> Bluff. Amen. Bluff. Not blunts. But don't. We don't, want, we don't want to blow no blunts, okay? We're blowing bluff. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. To the enemy. He already crossed, he crossed the enemy line. He don't have no business over there. And they still ain't take him out. But let's look at this now. <laughs> and David said, and Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you're not but a youth. And he's been a man of war from his youth. Now he's trying to size David up. And David said unto Saul, That servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and I smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose up against me, he said, I caught him by the beard. And I smote him, I slew him. That servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. Now, let me, let me share something with you, first of all. When David came up against this lion, it's not like your little puppy dogs, your dogs you have at home. Because, see, when I was in South Africa, they were going to take me walking with the lions. I saw one lion that was stuffed, and I thank God that the tour was over. Because they were trying to do a surprise trip for me. I would have had a surprise for them. Because I don't play that stuff, man. I walk with, no, I want to walk with a lion for well, Let me watch it on YouTube. And they, they had one lion in there that died of cancer. It was a very famous lion. And that lion stood about, his head stood about this tall. On all four feet. And David said he took him by the beard. And smoked him. He didn't shoot an arrow or a bow at it. He, took, he went up on the lion and grabbed him by his mane. Like give him back God's lamb. And he slew, he slew the lion. But notice this confidence that David had as one person. Even though his brother said, listen, you, you go back to tend those little sheep you have. And then Saul said, you don't even know, understand this skill. He's been a skill from, he had this skill from his youth. David said, you understand, David did a recall. He said, let me tell you, he said, you scared to fight a man. He said, I fought a lion and a bear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And David had to do this. When people try to put you down, you need to know how to stand up. And David now tells him, watch this now, that servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. He prophesied, saying he has defiled the armies of the living God. What David, David saw something different than what they saw. Then the Bible said in verse 37, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, out of the paw of the bear, he would deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with you. He said, I ain't going. <laughs> but notice something. David saw the outcome totally different. He had a different expectation. He understood that his God was with him. And now watch that his God was for him. And no matter who came up against him, they couldn't stand against him. Because he had God with him. See, David understood he had a covenant with the almighty God. And he said, this, this uncircumcised Philistine ain't going to be no different than the other battles that I fought before. He might be bigger. He might be different. But what? I still going to have the victory. And we all don't have battles in our life. Some have been different. And since some of them, they become bigger. But the victory will be no different. It all depends on what your expectations are. Do not allow what you see to determine how your outcome will be. Never allow that to happen. You have to have a better expectation. I don't care if you've been praying for your child for years, they're still on drugs. Don't see them that way. See them according to your covenant that you have with Almighty God. Amen? Amen. So David didn't have no problem with the situation at all. He understood that God could not fail. And God was a man of war himself. Watch this now. And in verse... Um, 38, and Saul armed David with his armor and put on him a hammer of brass upon his head and armed him with a coat of mail. And watch, this is watch it. Now, when people see that you, you made your mind up, then they want to tr show you how to go about it. But since you're going to go, uh, call so-and-so when you get there. No, no, no. If so-and-so so good, why you ain't go and call him yourself? Amen. Because people could see when victory is in process. When it's progressing, when it's about to happen, they want to tag on with And the Bible said, and David took that armor off. He said, because I have not proved this. In other words, this ain't God. I ain't used this before. I ain't going to use it now. You better hear what I'm saying right now. 
what worked the last time will work again. And God will put you into a position and, and I'll display that the people look at you and say, this person look like has so much faith, they can move a mountain. Amen. That you can actually move a mountain. You got to understand, we got to stop allowing circumstances and situations to keep us beneath. And keep us, you know, and, and containment and make us think that life can't get no better than this. Life can get better all depends on how we expect it to see. Amen. Praise God. And so, but David said, moreover. Somebody said, moreover. He had to keep saying that over and over and make sure that they understood what he was talking about because he had to drown out all the negative expectations. Why go to a battle and you thinking about losing? Why even go to a war and you think you're going to die? If I'm going to a war, I'm thinking I'm going to win. If I'm going to play ball, I'm expecting I'm going to win. Ain't no need of showing up if you don't expect to have the better outcome. Amen. Amen. So now Saul tried to put the sophisticated armor on David. And I'm going to tell you, praise still work. Mm -hmm. Clapping the hands still work. Come on, listen to me. Stump your feet still work. Tithing still works. Giving still works. And forgiveness still works. Amen. You ain't got to go all deep to win no battle. You got to be sophisticated because what worked before will work again. And God would take the little that you have and embarrass the big things in your life. Just imagine how big Saul was. And David come up there with none of the experience of the, the artillery that Israel was using. And he used a pebble. And know what he told Saul? See, he said, this day, not tomorrow. I ain't going to wait to see it's going to happen. He said, this day, boy, I'm going to take your head and the fowls of the air are going to eat your carcass. He said, David said, this is the way I see it. Because he was trying to tell David how he saw it. He said, you come to me like a dog with a stick and all. He said, oh, boy, boy, be quiet. He said, I got something to say. Don't let your circumstances talk you out of better. Some of you let your situations talk too much. And talk too long to the point that's what you expect for it to happen. And David told Saul in my own words, shut up. This day, I'm going to take your head. I don't know what it is you've been dealing with for a while, but you got to let it know to this day, today, it's going to stop. Today, whatever it is with your children, your finances, wherever you have your victory today. Don't be waiting no longer. Today, I have the victory because that's the way we see it. My Bible tells me I have what I say, not what you say, not as I say what you say. And if you say, and if you say different what God said, I ain't going to say it. Even though what you said may be appearing at this time, I'm not going to say it because I walk by faith and not by sight. And everything I see, what you said, it is subject to change because I'm going to have what I say. And I see better. I say better. I see better. We're going to have better today. Praise God. It's always talking next. Well, it's like this. It's like that. These things are happening. No, no. God don't. Every time you go to God talk about something, God don't say, oh, yeah. Oh, he don't do that. He don't do that at all. He always refer you back to his word. Always refer you back to his word. That's the only thing that's going to make. That's the only thing that's going to work. Amen. So we got to stay focused on what God can do if we want to a life of positive expectations. Amen. And see, you got to, one of the things we must realize is the only way we can develop negative expectations is by being distracted. By being distracted. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we hear and we see too many distracted things. And the enemy, that's his job, is to distract you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I get those distractions all the time. I know every time something come up, boom, watch, somebody's going to... Somebody's going to text this, somebody's going to text that, and the enemy's trying to distract me. But see, he's trying to change how I see my outcome. Hey, can I get a witness? He's trying to change how I see my outcome. He's trying to change the image, the picture, see how you feel, the way you feel, how you see. Like, devil, don't you know I know you by now? <laughs> hey, man, don't you know I know your tactics? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on. I'm going to see it the way that God said it. Yeah. Amen. But I must, watch this now, I must listen. Tell your neighbor, say, tell your neighbor, say, listen. I must listen. I must hear what I want to expect. Go watch this now, because if I heard something that had somewhat of potential to change my expectations, then I need to find something better to hear. Amen. 
I need to find something better to hear to modify and keep my expectations on point. Amen. That's so important. Now, let's, let's look at Psalms 139. Psalms 139. Some people say, well, don't, don't, don't man want me. Don't no man want me. I'm just going just gonna, to just gonna be me and my foe and no more and, and this and that and that. You know, know why you say that? Because that's the way you see yourself. I'm going to ask for a raise, but they ain't going to give it to me because they only, only give it to the light-skinned folks. But I still going to ask for one. Why you ask for it? Because that's just the way you see yourself. In other words, listen to me. To expect better, you first got to see better in yourself. In spite of what you experience in life, you must see better in yourself. You got to see better in yourself. Mm -hmm. When they told me the date, when I went up into the, the, the coffee place, she, and she was there and gave me the date, I almost get ready to run out the stove. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 that's okay. Uh, I know somebody can refer to but No, no God said, no, you. And you look in the mirror, and you start speaking better to yourself, and you tell yourself that you can do this in Christ Jesus. See, watch it God will always bring you upon something that will scare you. First of all, he's trying to scare the hell out of you first. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this correctly, correctly. I don't know how you do it, but I'm going to do it correctly. He will scare the hell that's out of you, the fear and the excuses, because he's trying to make room for better. So he always brings something greater to, to you that you had previously experienced. Because he wants you to make a choice. Either you're going to keep letting hell and lack rule on the inside of you, or you're going to make room for better. And someone made too much room for hell in our lives. Or got addicted to drama. Mm -hmm. or, or got addicted to being let down. Or got addicted to getting our feelings hurt. Or got addicted to being rejected and being abused. Or got addicted to it and people cling to that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You got to make room for better. Yeah. You got to get to a place that you have mind-blowing accomplishments in your life. Yeah. In spite of what's going on at the present time. Why is that? Because God loves me that much. He loves me that much. And when people see you expand and being better and experiencing better and your whole expectation is totally different, either they will get closer to you through modification of their own character or they'll be further away from you, one or the other. And some people, you can't shake out of your life that you don't want in your life because you stand on the same level. Okay, let me move, let me move on. Let me move on. But if you go to a higher level, and better and seeing your outcome different than what is, previous, what is present at the time, watch, somebody got to go to another level. It's going to be a shift in the atmosphere. Amen? Look at Psalms 139. Somebody say better. better. Psalms 139, look at verse 14. He says this. He said, I will praise thee for I am. Look at this now. I don't think you, y'all must be on the wrong page. Where y'all, where y'all in the book of Revelation? Where are y'all? Y'all supposed to be shouting and kicking the person in front of you. He says, I will praise thee. And the reason why I'm going to praise you is because I am fearfully and wonderfully made and marvelous are thy works. And that my soul know right well. See, watch this, watch this. Oh, I just, uh, see, you, you praise God for the raise, you praise God for the job, you praise God for the car, but when you praise God for you? <laughs> Got me? When have you praised God for you? When you look in the mirror and say, God, I got eyes I can see. I got a brain I can think, I can imagine, I can create. And God, I was created in your image, and I can do things like you in your likeness. I am your highest creation. I can talk to you. I can call a thing to be that as though they were. Listen to me. Listen to me, baby. You need to do yourself a favor. You need to stand on your feet and give God some praise for you. Yeah, for you. For you. 
You ain't got to be as cute as the person next to you, but why? But you all came out the same bowl. You all came out the same creator. You all love by the same God. So we all are fearfully and wonderfully made. But your soul got to know it right well. And watch that. When your soul know it, there are things you will refuse not to let it linger in your soul. I'm wonderfully made. Look at me. Look at me. Watch this now. See, you got to look at that mirror. Turn sideways to turn back this way real quick. And say, <laughs> and say I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You say, I am awesome. <laughs> I am awesome. Amen, somebody. You got to know how, and you look at your children. Look at that beautiful baby. That baby is awesome. That's a future she's holding in her arm right now. Nobody can do that. But God, God does nothing without a purpose and prosperity and victory in mind. That baby's purpose has already been laid out, cut out, and is already ready for that baby. Amen. Fearfully. Wonderfully. That baby didn't come off no assembly line. That ain't no cookie cutter. Might look like somebody, but she is fearfully and wonderfully made. As all your children are like that. I don't care. They got an F in school. I don't care what the case may be at home. They still are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you got to know that, that they've been created by God. If you don't recognize the better, you can't have it. You can't expect something that you don't expect. You can't expect it. I don't care what that teacher said. Don't let them come to you with that professional Position, you better be human. You mean tell me everybody in your family perfect? Y'all won't mess with me this morning. Look at this now. But this your soul got to know right well, even if you're behind on bills. You got to say, but no, no, that's not how I see myself. I see myself coming out of this. Matter of fact, I see myself out of it now. <laughs> Amen. As a matter of fact, I see myself having somebody else get out of it. What are my expectations? Because if you don't see yourself coming out of something, you wouldn't dare to help someone else. All right. Amen. But I see myself coming out of this. I see myself, I see all my bills paid. Yes. Amen. I see I have plenty more to put in store. I see myself in a restaurant paying for other people's meals. Amen. I see, I just see it happen. I expect better. Yes. Amen. Yes. And when I and I told when me and God was talking about, you know, that location, I said, Well, God, can I have a helicopter? He said, can you believe for it? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Helicopter. Every place we go is enough land to land it. Well, we need 5,000 people. No, you don't. You don't need 5,000 people to get. You don't need to do that. Uh-uh. You'd be amazed. Somebody might spot you out and say, hey, I don't know. For some reason, we just want to finance everything you're doing. We just want to finance it. Now I'm seeing that happen in some of my friends' life. The people gave them Gulfstream jets and all kinds of stuff. They, they still, that, the, and the giver still remains anonymous. Yeah. Yeah. See, we keep looking at everything and say, well, and we begin to measure or grade what we can't expect. Uh-uh. All of our expectations come from him. And he can do anything. And he can do everything. And why, he can do it for anybody if they believe it. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise in here. You, you're not going to keep being held bound by your job. You're not going to keep being held bound by how much money the government is paying you. Become your own bank, like Joseph. Amen. You, you, you don't have to be bound by the circumstance what's going on in this world. Matter of fact, what's going on in the White House is, is a, 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 a clear sign that God is our, we need him to be our savior. Amen. 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 And the thing I love about Jesus said, if you pay attention, I already told you that the government is going to rest upon my shoulders. He said, really, you are the government. You don't separate government from church. The church is supposed to be the government. Matter of fact, people don't say the church is political. Are you really? See, what happened? We allowed the world to define politics. They got the wrong definition. We allowed the world to define government. That's not the right, that's not the right definition. You find politics and government right there in the book of Genesis, chapter 1. All the way to chapter 6, you'll find it there. But we try to separate church and state. They ain't got what God intended for it to be. Somebody say, stick with the blueprint. 
Okay, look at um, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Y'all being blessed today? Second Corinthians chapter 6, look at verse 10. And this is Paul speaking to the people at Corinth. And notice something, this is what Paul said in verse 10, y'all there? He says, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich. Am I right, please? Yeah, 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 right, right. He said, as having nothing, yet possessing all things. He said, oh, ye Corinthians. He said, our mouth is open to you. Our heart is enlarged to you. He says, you are not straightened in us, but your straight is in your own bowels. In other words, see, the, the people Corinth was feeling small. They was feeling intimidated. And Paul said, pay attention to what, what we've been doing. <laughs> and Paul said, listen, we come to enlarge you with these words and enlarge you with our giving. And he told them, he said, your, your own restrict." Restrictions and confinement. He said, let's come from the inside of you. Yeah, yeah. Notice how you feel sometimes when you walk up in a bank and you don't have on, you know, business attire. Notice how you feel sometimes when you walk into the room and everybody's skin is different from your color. You begin to feel small. And they said, not a word to you. And you're thinking that's the way they see you. No, that's the way you see yourself within. Amen. Because some people go looking for people to look down on them so they can post it on Facebook. Amen. There's some people are looking for mistreatment in different places. They're looking for to get in a relationship and expect for it to go sour in three months. They're looking for that. And then they blame someone else, but they didn't have the right view on the inside for better from the get go. Amen. We have to continue to expect better on the inside. Amen. When I walk up in the bank, hey, everybody doing? And they don't speak, ain't no problem. You're just busy. You're preoccupied. Something going on. Hey, man, so, and walk on out the door. Well, I'm going to change banks. Like your thirty dollars and eighteen cent gonna make a difference. <laughs> like they gonna beg you not to leave. They say, "Good, that's less paperwork we gotta do for your Well, how much you had in there, Amen. Amen. Somebody said, "But we got more money in the bank than that." Amen. Watch this now. When our bank account started filling up, then they started calling, "Mr. Harvest, is there anything we can do for you guys?" Whatever. Da, 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 da. But I still always walk by there and I mess with the vice president and all that. I go right in there off. They be on the phone. Say, What's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> hey, I'm me, I can't help that's the way I came out hey, amen, I don't come in there hello sir, how old I was sitting in the waiting where? no, I ain't sitting in the waiting, nothing I, get, I gotta leave, what's up man you doing alright, love you talk to you later, love you hey, amen just send them fruit and stuff like that you know, let them know, hey man I love you guys, I appreciate you, you handling my account they do special stuff for me, they don't, they don't do for other people, they call me like I'm the president of the bank Maybe I am. Amen. They help me out. They look out for me. All these courtesy things they do for me. They, they, people love me because I love them. I don't look at that. That's because you're a heathen. That ain't no heathen. We think it's something wrong with everybody except ourselves. Just because you come to church frequently. And I ain't got to shout. I ain't got to fall on the floor. I ain't got to pray in tongues for people to respect me. I come in there with tennis shoes on. I come in there with a suit on. Watch. The better is on the inside, not on my clothing. And some of you think, well, it's because of the way I dress, the way I look, because I ain't combed my hair. That ain't better. Better's on the inside of you. And sometimes you don't have time to do that. And then some of you guys don't take time to do it. Amen. Listen to me now. I, I, I do these things. I shine my shoes the night or in the morning. I lay everything out. I iron everything because I believe in better. Yes. Amen. I lay everything out and I begin to shine my shoes. Yes. I get ready going out here. I'm going to do the Lord's work. Amen. And then there's some days my shoes just ain't shine. And then there's some days my hair just, just I don't know what happened. 
Seriously, I don't know. Some days my hair just don't want. I know ladies, you have challenges with hair, but men have challenges too. But see, you some guys, you get away with because some things you would do, we can't do. I ain't going to go with that, but we just can't do it. <laughs> Are you hear what I'm saying? See, y'all got it made. Y'all got, y'all got to switch up. I, I got something to work with this dragon. You know, <laughs> you know, put some braids and stuff. And you got some help. But a brother, he's, if he ain't got clippers, he ain't got no trimmers, or he ain't got no oil, he, he by himself. <laughs> and I tell the people straight up, I say, excuse my hat. I'm having a bad hair day. That's all it is. <laughs> Just take your head off and be like, I say, not today. We ain't doing it today, brother. <laughs> <laughs> not doing today. No, man, I tell you. I understand. Look at this now. All right, y'all, look at this now. So how do you see yourself when you're up against all odds? How, how do you see yourself? And that's important. How do I mirror myself? Do I mirror myself with the circumstances? Or do I mirror myself with the word? Am I going to measure myself with the circumstances? Or am I going to measure myself with the word? So I had to continue to hear that word until I see myself correctly. Amen. And as I see myself correctly, I can expect better. How do you see yourself? That's what the children did when they went over to the promised land. You know, when they came back with grapes, they said, but the way we see ourselves, I don't think we can do this. But they just came back with grapes. <laughs> there was only 12. And they came back with grapes. But, you know, but I don't know, but, you know, I've been divorced three times. You know, I, I had some issues, and, you know, I've been in abuse relationships and this and that, and my father rejected me, my mother rejected me, all that stuff. But my Bible said, even when they do that, the Lord still will lift you up. Yes, he does. Amen. He'll still lift you up. So it doesn't matter what happened in, in your family. It doesn't matter. God is still there for you. So we got to get rid of the blame game. I used to do it all the time, blaming stuff on my daddy. He won't dare for me. He ain't come to the game. He ain't do that. I found out, hey, I ain't the only one. I thought I was the only one who didn't have a daddy or daddy didn't walk by there. And I found out, I got a daddy who created the heavens and earth. Yeah. Amen. Some relationships are not there so God can fulfill them. So you won't put God in some cosmic box. And you put them in your heart and in your mind and, in, and what you do in your personal life. Matter of fact, those who have been rejected are some of those who are most closest to God. And you take advantage of it because you have so many other things standing in your way. Oh, it's some hurt, it's some pain alone, but he got, there's a bomb in Gilead that will heal that. And will soothe that and will guarantee your success if you understand that God didn't put you in this earth without resources, without backup, without love, without favor, without all the things that you need. It's there for you. It's there for you. Matter of fact, not having a father, it made me become a better spiritual father. Because I knew how to you know, deal from certain angles in life. I wouldn't sit there and weep and murmur about it. And so every time there was a rejection came, I said, oh, I'll travel all the way back. I said, man, that's too far to go. I ain't going all the way back there again. I get tired just to sit down. That's going to take me five, 10 minutes to get through all those thoughts, get all the way back there. And then I got to build myself, come back all the way over here. Well, I've been all the way over there. Come on, I can't ain't got time for windshield wiping. Amen. Let's go to the next level. And you're always going to have challenges in your life. Amen. And that's one of the reasons why, why God placed me in your life. Amen. To give you the father experience of something you never experienced before. Amen. And give you the pastoral experience of something you never experienced before. And then likewise, back to me. Amen. So we didn't miss nothing. We just ain't take the same path that other people took. And society will tell you your life is not better if you don't have father and mother in the same house. I know some people had father and mother in the same house, and it was terrible. Amen. Having a father and a mother in the same house does not equal your success. Not at all. Mm -mm. Now you hear what I'm saying? And statistics say is that most, children, most people, you know, only about, about 80, no, not say probably about, they say 8% of black people will be successful because they don't have fathers and mothers, fathers together in the house. They're trying to, get, trying to set your expectations. So you, watch this, so you have an excuse for failure. So when you fail, oh, it's because that daggone daddy won't dare. If I had a doggone daddy, everything would be all right, but I ain't got a daddy. So I, so I have, I'm... It's legit for me to fail because I ain't had no daddy. But Paul says, but God has given you many fathers. Hallelujah. Amen. There's no excuse for failure. 
There's no excuse for it. Only thing failure is going to do is support where you messed up. But I come to kick the kickstand from beneath that today. God got you. He wants you to dream bigger, broader, and better than you ever had before. So no more excuses. It's time for better starting with you. See it in yourself. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on.